What's up, everybody? How's everybody doing today? Welcome back. I'm Sean. And I'm Jen. And today, we're going to talk about to combine or not to combine our finances. That was the weirdest rendition of Hamlet I have ever heard, but okay. <laughs> yes, that's what we're talking about today. So we've been married for what, like five or six months now? A little over six months, I believe. Cool. Hey, I got one right. <laughs> <laughs> You're better at that than me. Um, so yeah, five or six months-ish. And uh, But we've been living together for a really long time, like oh, yeah. five years, I think, oh, yeah. somewhere around there. And we've never really had the hey, do you want to combine finances to make things easier talk? Mm -hmm. We've never discussed the idea of what if we only had one bank account instead of like the number of bank accounts that we actually have. <laughs> so we decided we mm -hmm. would make an episode about that and discuss it with you to not only give you all of the info that we've compiled that we have been procrastinating talking about, but also to force ourselves to have this conversation <laughs> finally. So you guys get to hear it live of us actually resolving how we're going to handle our finances. <laughs> it's a stressful thing. Finances it really is. is, it's like, that's the number one thing couples fight about mm -hmm. is money. So maybe that's like in the back of my mind why we've been avoiding it. Mm -hmm. But hey, no time like on the on camera to uh, <laughs> figure this stuff out. <laughs> if we're going to fight, we're going to do it with you guys. <laughs> sure. <laughs> So first we want to go through the different options and like the pros and cons of those options. And then we'll talk about why we suck at this. And then we'll talk about whatever solution we come up with by the end of this video. I'm ready. So, I think, are, you, are you sure you're ready? I think this is a good idea because like you said, we've we've lived together at the beginning as friends. Yeah. So, so we weren't going to combine then. Yeah. Naturally it was whoever paid whatever bill in the household, we just sent them money. At the time it was me. I yeah. paid all of the bills in that. I, yeah. We lived with four or three other people. Mm -hmm. So there was us two and then three roommates mm -hmm. and he was one of my roommates. Mm -hmm. And so I was handling like money coming in mm -hmm. from all four roommates to pay all of the bills. So just, I was like the bank of Jen. It just became habit <laughs> to just write her a check for yeah. utilities and everything. And just like, here you go, here's rent, here's utilities. Bye -bye. But in the last house, it was a little bit different because mm -hmm. we only had one roommate and rent went to him, mm -hmm. but all the other bills came to me. You were still hands off. Yeah. So now we have this house and now we're kind of like sharing things, but mm -hmm. it's all over the place. Mm -hmm. So... I think it's about time. It's about time we have this conversation, huh? <laughs> also, with all of my experience being like the bill payer, I, th you would think I have a lot to bring to this conversation, but I don't have as much as he does because you actually work in banking. And that I do. I actually work uh, for bank or for for bank for, for bank. <laughs> I can English. There we go. <laughs> well, you almost said the name of the bank and then you thought about yeah. it. I I, felt, I saw the hamster like running. Wait, wait. Yeah, I work for a bank, so I'm used to ha helping people with their finances and, you know, their decisions and things like that. So that aspect, I understand. So he's got some experience mm -hmm. in this realm, so we're going to tap into that today. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, the first option mm -hmm. is what most couples do. It's what my parents did. I'm sure your parents, parents do it. Do. It's um, combining all finances into one account. Mm -hmm. So... That honestly sounds like such a convenient option. Mm -hmm. All of the bills would come out of this account. All of the direct deposits would go into that account. It's super easy to like, I, I was going to say transfer money, but like if everything's in one account, you don't even have mm -hmm. to transfer money. It's just all right there. Mm -hmm. One pot for stuff to go in and stuff to come out. It's amazing. It makes large purchases easy. Oh, like yeah. if our AC goes out, we know exactly how much is in this one account. It's the only account we've got. Maybe like we have a savings or something, but like we have one checking account mm -hmm. to pay all the bills with. Super convenient. Mm -hmm. If we need to pull money for, you know, we, we need new garbage disposal, we found out. Mm -hmm. If we need to pull money from that, I don't have to go, hey, do you have it? Do you want me to get it? Do, you need, do we need to like combine? Mm -hmm. Which one of us is gonna pay for it? I'll, mm -hmm. I'll pay you, you pay me. You don't need to go through any of that hassle. It's just all there with mm -hmm. both of your names on it. You both have control over the account. Mm -hmm. I agree. And then like you said, with having it all in one spot, you don't have to do that whole like, what if something happens? Or like, what if like when we had yard work done, what if what if they come and they're like, oh, it's this amount of money. And you're like, oh, I don't have all that in my account. And then you try to reach out to me, but I'm at work. Yeah. And I can't get in contact with. And then I can't pay Chris Brown. Yeah. <laughs> But, Sorry, you know, we mentioned it yeah. in the last video. <laughs> ah, throwback to the previous one. But no, um, so 
it, that I can see how it can be way more convenient to just open up the app and go, that's how much we have. We can so pay you, Chris. Convenient. Good job. Like, so incredibly convenient. Yeah. However, there are downsides to mm-hmm. having a joint account and that being, like, the only bank account you have. Mm-hmm. Um, currently, our direct deposits from work are all into our individual accounts. So you have the initial hassle of moving everything around. So if we decided to have one account, suddenly I've got to take all my bills and move them to that account. You've got to take all your bills and move them to that account. Mm-hmm. We have to take both of our direct deposits and move them to that account. Mm-hmm. That's a huge hassle up front, and I know like it's doable and banks are great. You do this for people all the time mm-hmm. at your job, like, but it's a hassle and I don't want to do it. And then <laughs> we also have to set up all of our withdrawals, like all of our payments. That's what I mean. Yeah. All the bills, all the mm-hmm. all the auto pays, uh, everything's got to get mm-hmm. moved to that one account. It also makes gift giving really impossible. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Like, you know, like if if you were to buy something or I was to buy something at a specialty store, like if I went to a candle company. I would know. He bought me a gift, you know. I know he didn't buy the candle for himself. (laughs) Or if I see that you went to Guitar Center, Mm -hmm. I'll be like, oh, he spent 15 bucks. He bought me drumsticks. He's so sweet. And then I'm like so excited. And then he gets home and he actually got himself like a new wire or something. And then I'm mad (laughs) because I got my my hopes up. Where's my drumsticks? Where's my drumsticks? Uh. No, um, it just makes gift giving like really impossible if both of you have your eyes on the account, which you should. You should always have your eyes on your finances and make sure that you know what money's coming in, what money's going out. Mm -hmm. It's really important that no matter how you handle your finances, that both of you are committed to keeping an eye on it. Mm -hmm. You know, your finances are kind of like an unsupervised child when you're not (laughs) watching it. It can do anything. You have no idea. It can get into all the trouble in the world Mm -hmm. the minute you turn your back. So just keep your eye on it. And the thing is, if you keep your eye on it, you can't surprise each other. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, I'm not the type of girl that likes, like, diamond jewelry or anything. But, like, if I was and I saw that he made, like, a rather sizable purchase at a jewelry store, I'd be like, I think he bought me something. (laughs) Hey, bud, who'd you buy that for? (laughs) Like, but it's also nice to have two eyes on that account because... Like, for instance, my ex, she was one of those people that looked at her account like once every three weeks. Oh, that stresses me out. <laughs> but she didn't realize that someone had hacked her card. Oh, yeah, it is good they to did, have two eyes They on did the a account. couple grand worth of purchases, and this was several weeks. So at that point, it was time for rent. And then she goes, oh, I don't have the money. And I'm like, excuse me? <laughs> and then she goes, no, look, someone stole money out of my account. And it's like... You didn't catch this three weeks ago when it happened? And that could lead to fights yes. as well. But whether, but that's whether your finances are separate yep. or together. So mm-hmm. make sure that your eyes are on your finances because mm-hmm. whatever happens to your account does affect your spouse mm-hmm. or uh, relationship partner um, when you do live together and combine mm-hmm. expenses at least. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So speaking of expenses, the other downside is that it makes individual purchases much more stressful. Oh, like. Yeah. Yesterday, okay, we were playing around with mic settings and I decided I needed a new mic for my tutorials because just things weren't working. So I was like, maybe I should get a boom arm, maybe I should get this. And I realized I have a perfectly good mic to use. I don't have to spend all this money, but I do need a new phone case in order to use it because I can't use my current phone case with the adapter. I know that sounds like a like a stupid problem, but like, so I need a new phone case. And I, we combine our expenses and we combine like our income, even though our finances are in separate accounts. I still felt the need to be like, hey, so do you mind if I like get a new phone case? Like financially, are we cool mm-hmm. if I get a new one? I still felt the need to ask permission, but it's not like permission. It's more like, can I have your blessing to spend some money? <laughs> like, are you going to be mad at me if I spend a little bit of money on a phone case? Because phone cases are not cheap. So. Or like... One day, I um, it was when we were trying to buy the house, and oh. I had to send you my uh, bank statements, um, which going through buying a house is just a whole Check out our vlog <laughs> on how to buy a house, because that was, uh, maybe we'll do like another episode where we go in depth in the yeah. process of it, but like, we went through our, our headache of the whole thing, so check out that vlog, it's actually pretty fun. But like one day, I was at work and I was so tired, I didn't sleep good that night, I slept for maybe an hour, and I got like two or three like energy drinks and pop tarts at work and <laughs> um, you know at, at your diner thing at work they're always going to charge you more you sound She's, like a college student during finals week with pop tarts and energy drinks <laughs> she goes did you really spend 15 dollars at work i was like did you spend 15 
dollars at the she cafe like, at work. What did you buy? He goes pop tarts, and I'm like, I said pop tarts and energy drinks. I was like, those she are goes, some expensive pop tarts. She was like, let's go to the store and get them in bulk so that way we can save some money. And I was like, yeah, I probably should do that. But it wasn't like it wasn't like she was checking up I on wasn't me. It bad. just okay. It was the the top thing because I don't spend use my card that often. It was the top thing on the thing. So when she saw it, it was just like pop tarts. <laughs> it was just one of those things where I was just kind of like, was that really a necessary expense while we're trying to buy a house? Like we are nickel and diming right now. It was necessary that day. It I'm was sure very... it was. I'm absolutely sure it was. Uh, like the Coke Zero we're gonna get on the way to rehearsal is extremely necessary today. Oh yeah. So, but. That that happens more often when you have a joint account, mm-hmm. which is where that stress comes in. Every purchase, both people have their eyes on it. So you can start to feel a little bit of like guilt if you stop at the gas station and get a drink. Mm-hmm. And maybe money's a little tight that month and maybe the other person's gonna be like, did you really need to get a $12 coffee? And you'll be like, that was the cheapest coffee Starbucks has. And you're like, you're right. <laughs> and But it makes it so much more stressful and it makes it, a lot more likely to fight with each other. Absolutely, absolutely. Over little things like Mm Pop-Tarts or uh, phone cases Mm -hmm. or, hey, I thought of this really, really cool vlog idea where I buy a whole bunch of sweatpants and Mm -hmm. you'll be like, did you really need to spend $75 on sweatpants? And then it's like a small argument, you know? Mm -hmm. And the answer is yes, I really did need to spend $75 (laughs) on sweatpants. And like at my job, I get phone calls from people that are like, there's these unauthorized charges on my account. I don't know what this is. It was like $40 and $30 and stuff. And I look at it and it was done by their joint account holder. Mm-hmm. And they like they have no idea that those purchases even happened. Mm-hmm. And then they got mad. And I don't want to know what happened when they hung up the phone mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. So those are the upsides and the downsides to having all of your money in one place. Mm-hmm. I don't know if the upsides outweigh the downsides, but let's discuss having it completely opposite and then like see what outweighs the other. Okay. So the opposite of that is having two completely separate accounts, no joint account, kind of like what we have right now. Okay. And I mean, the upsides is like the biggest upside for me is that even though we are cohabitating and we are uh, sharing expenses, it still makes me feel financially independent Mm -hmm. to have my own account where all of my money goes and I can do whatever I want with this money to a degree, mm-hmm. if I know that we're like, like the mortgage is new, so that's why we're nickel and diming a little bit. And I'm like, can I get a phone case? Do you mind if I get a phone case? <laughs> like normally it wouldn't be that big of a deal, but I'm like, hey, so mm-hmm. um, we went from having a roommate to having a, no roommate and a mortgage. Yeah. <laughs> so things are a little stressful, but I have my own account with my own money. I'm financially independent and it has that feeling to it do you feel like that I do I feel like like I don't have to explain anything if I if I want to go and spend three dollars at work on a drink then I don't have to be like hey just to let you know I did this you know not like she'd be mad at me but it's more like like you said earlier it's more of a if you're penny pinching or if you're trying to like or if you're trying to save for something big like right now we're trying to save a little bit because we need to make a big purchase for the studio but Mm -hmm. also we want to have a little like uh What's the word for when you like save a bunch of money? A nest egg? Sure, like a nest egg, but like for the air conditioner. Yeah. <laughs> just in case. Because I have, I just have this weird feeling that as soon as summer hits, the, the AC is going to blow. Mm. So. But, but yeah, so like it's one of those things where right now, and like it, we just we just went through Christmas. Oh, yeah. I that There's no way, lot. like trying to buy stuff at Christmas time and, you know, we, we set our, our goals of we, what we... Uh, we set a max limit of what we were going to spend on each other and both of us sucked at staying mm-hmm. within that limit. So January has been a, an adventure mm-hmm. financially to be, <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> but yeah. it's, you still have that feeling of like, well, this is my money. I earned it. I can spend it. Mm-hmm. Yes, we both have the same bills, but it has some independence to it, which is kind of nice, you know? Um, the other upside is that the initial hassle of having to move all your bills and all of your direct deposits, it's eliminated. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do any of that because everything kind of stays the same. Mm -hmm. The downside is that you have the hassle every single month, like we're experiencing right now Mm -hmm. of, okay, bills are due. Which bills in your account? Okay, these bills are in my account. Mm -hmm. So I need to give you this much and then you need to give me this much. So I'll just subtract it. You have to do literal like advanced calculus in order to figure out who has to give who what. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And yeah. Then, and then you have to remember <laughs> what time of the month different things come out. Oh, yeah, because some bills come out, like, at the first of the month, and then some bills come out at, like, the 15th of the mm-hmm. month, and some of our subscriptions are, like, on, mm-hmm. like, the 7th and the 22nd or mm-hmm. something, and so it's just kind of like a... That's, I think when you have two individual accounts, both eyes need to be like on each account Mm -hmm. and then discussions, more discussions need to be had about like, Hey, did this get paid? Yeah. Because like when we moved, um, I didn't realize (laughs) that we we were actually on a cruise. I didn't realize that the electric building wasn't set up for auto withdrawal. Well, I think that you tried to set it up for auto withdrawal, but what they said, if I remember correctly, they said it couldn't be set up for auto withdrawal until after your first payment. Yeah. And we hadn't made the payment yet. And so our, our electric almost got shut off while we were in Amber Cove, yeah. Dominican yeah. Republic. So we're sitting there yeah. at a Starbucks, like frantically calling, mm-hmm. trying to fix this problem. Mm-hmm. It was great. Yeah, it was, we, got it, it, was we awesome. got it taken care of, but it was just like, <laughs> she got that email that says, you're past due, you will get shut off. And she's like, hey, what's this? <laughs> I, was, you know, I was a little like, uh, did you not take care of this? And then it turns out it was just like mm-hmm. a misunderstanding. Mm-hmm. But... Had we both had it all in one account, mm-hmm. I would have seen it faster. I would have been able to handle it as well. She'd so. have been like, hey, the so-and-so was supposed to come out this month or on this it date. Didn't. It didn't. What Do you happened? know what's going on? Yeah. And it'd be like, I do now. <laughs> so that's that's <laughs> yeah. definitely one of the downsides is that it's a lot more hassle to mm-hmm. keep track of what's in your account and then discuss and things can get lost in translation. And Or what if it's a banking holiday? Like, oh Lord! Like today we're filming this on Martin Luther King Day, and is it a banking holiday? It is a banking it holiday. Is. So like transfers Ooh. aren't going through, things like that. So if we had a bill that was due today, and thank goodness for like Zelle and things like that, you can do a person-to-person transfer pretty quick. But if there yeah. is a delay in any way, that bill's late. Yeah. So you have to adjust for that and things like that. So essentially, like, not only do you need eyes everywhere mm-hmm. <laughs> when you have two separate <laughs> accounts, like we said, it's a little difficult to split bills mm-hmm. like evenly Mm -hmm. or at least proportionally like if one person makes more than the other person not only do you have to split bills like proportionally but now you have to split bills proportionally and then do the calculus to make sure it all matches up between the two accounts and all the bills that come Mm -hmm. out of each account i'm dizzy trying to think about that (laughs) and that's kind of how we have it right now so um, yeah it's a major hassle Mm -hmm. around bill time transfers everywhere Mm -hmm. so yeah now let's get into how we actually have it. Mm-hmm. Let's see. We we don't do this right, okay? Oh, absolutely this is, not. Let me explain to you why <laughs> we, we a, suck. We have a hybrid. <laughs> we sort of have a hybrid. This is exactly why we suck. Mm-hmm. I have a checking and a savings account with one bank. Mm-hmm. He has a checking and a savings account with another bank. Oh, they're completely different. Completely different. We have a joint savings account. Mm-hmm. With a third completely different bank. None of that is smart. We didn't do that right, did we? No, we didn't. What <laughs> happened is I had mine, you had yours, and we're like, hey, this one has a good interest rate. Let's do that. Mm-hmm. And yeah, now we have <laughs> now we have our money in three different places. Transferring mm-hmm. between the three is so difficult. Mm-hmm. It's it's just such a hassle. Oh yeah. So I after really talking about this mm-hmm. and this has been a true reflection. What you've watched here is like our actual discussion and reflection. I don't know how you feel about this, mm-hmm. but I like the account that has the high interest rate, mm-hmm. but I don't want to move my main account since I want to say 90% of our bills mm-hmm. come out of that account. Mm-hmm. What would you say to like you coming over to my bank mm-hmm. with your individual stuff? Okay. We have a joint account there. Or I put you on my joint a, on my account, make it a joint account for the bills, mm-hmm. and I make a separate like personal mm-hmm. account, and you come over there. And we're at one institution minus this really really high interest savings account. I can tell you right now, I hate my personal bank. <laughs> not, it's not the one I work at, but my it's the one that I got when I moved to Florida. When I first got in here, I was like, mm-hmm. I need nobody a bank makes account. that decision correctly the first time. I swear. I was like, I need a bank account. I looked out my door and I could see one. I was like. I'm going to go there. Oh, did they give you a free toaster? No. They didn't get nothing. You know how banks used to have those deals? You're like, you open an account and they give you like a toaster. 
I want one. <laughs> I'll buy you a toaster. Aw, thanks. Aww. But yeah, so I opened it and I just, I kept it and it's just one of those things that have been a hassle ever since I had them. So yeah, I'm absolutely okay with going over to your bank. So to be I fair, agree with you on that. To be fair, if I wasn't so like hell bent on keeping my stuff in this one account, the smartest thing to do, let me just impart this wisdom to everybody listening or watching, uh, the smartest thing to do would be to have an individual account for each person and a joint checking and a joint savings account all at the same institution mm-hmm. because that makes transfers between them simple. Mm-hmm. It makes everything very direct. You can have your eyes on the things that have your name on it. Like we both can have our eyes on the checking account. Mm-hmm. I don't need to have my eyes on his individual checking mm-hmm. account. He doesn't need to have his eyes on mine. We can make our purchases for gifts or like pop tarts or Coke Zero. We, have, <laughs> we can make our purchases through there. Yeah. We can. We're adults. We can handle our like mm-hmm. our personal finances. But then it won't affect joint bills. We always make sure we have enough in that account. Mm-hmm. That's the smartest way to do it. Mm-hmm. I just don't necessarily want to move. I don't want to go through the hassle of moving all of my bills mm-hmm. to the one that has the high interest. So can we just like do like a hybrid hybrid? Mm-hmm. I, I think that'll work, but my, me personally, I think we should open up a new joint account so that way you don't have to change all your direct deposit and everything to your uh, individual account that you already have set up. And then we can create the joint account and I'll move my account over no, to No, because then I still have to move the bills. Oh, yeah. I say no. <laughs> I'd I rather tried. move one direct deposit than a million bills, okay? I, I tried. I tried to be. No, no, but it's but yeah. it's smart. So And, and most... Uh, mo- um, Actually, I'm pretty sure all banks will have the uh, an application to add an additional owner. Oh, yeah. So it takes a couple days and it'll be good. <laughs> yeah, so I think we came up with the perfect solution for us. I think it still needs a little bit of, a, of discussion, but we can do that off camera. But hopefully the things that we have learned and the, um, the comparisons mm-hmm. that we've made have helped you guys out. Uh, finances are a very tricky part of a relationship. We are so lucky Mm -hmm. to be on the same page when it comes to bill paying, investing, Mm -hmm. saving. We are very much on the same page. Mm -hmm. But if you're not on the same page with your partner, be at least open to hearing why they have their perspective Mm -hmm. on money. And that goes both ways. Mm -hmm. Make sure both of you are willing to listen or if you're in a polyamorous relationship that all of you are willing Mm -hmm. to listen and a compromise can be made. I know we differ on on one thing. What's that? My minimum that I'm happy Mm -hmm. with in my bank account is a lot different from yours. If I got a hundred bucks, I'm excited. (laughs) Yeah, that's not how I I, I stress out Mm -hmm. if I have that little. So like we had to compromise on that, (laughs) but it's why I... Don't if we have that joint account where mm-hmm. all the bills come out of, I don't need to stress about what's in your individual account. That's your problem. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She's like, you don't have money for pop tarts. You don't have money for pop tarts. <laughs> Go to the dollar store. They're a dollar for a box. Yeah, <laughs> just but, saying. No, I agree. I, I think that you know, talking about finances, just this discussion, I can see how so many couples would have gotten into an argument. Well, no, you don't need to know what I'm buying and blah, blah, blah. That's, like, that is something, though. Some some people can be very, like, secretive mm-hmm. with their spending habits, whether they're, like, maybe a shopaholic and they have, like, a little bit of a, like, a little bit of shame about it. Mm-hmm. Um, if your partner is, like, a shopaholic, don't shame that person. Don't be mad at that person. Like, that's your partner. You, mm-hmm. you committed, for better or for worse, all right? Mm-hmm. Um, just... Be open to discussing it, maybe coming up with like solutions Mm -hmm. to it because it, something like overspending Mm -hmm. can definitely hurt a couple's finances, especially if it's like one person doing it and not even realizing they're doing it or doing it all the time and not communicating those purchases. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing is that if you're going to keep your accounts separate, like I said earlier, you really need to communicate when you make big purchases. Because let's say bills are coming up mm-hmm. and uh, I get the call from Danzar that all the shoes are in. Mm-hmm. I buy all the shoes for my company and my company members pay me back. Mm-hmm. That is a gigantic purchase. Mm-hmm. Let's say I make that purchase on the 29th. Mm. But I don't tell you. Mm. I'm going to panic because I don't have rent money. Yep. <laughs> or mortgage money now. But I could tell him I made that purchase and then we could... 
go, okay, well, we'll just pull money from here and mm-hmm. we can make this work and, until I'm paid back. Mm-hmm. Or I could just be smart and not make that purchase on the 29th of the month. Except maybe <laughs> February. Oh. <laughs> if there's going to be people in the comments, why the 29th of February? But that's the other thing. Like, make sure that you discuss your spending habits, your mm-hmm. saving habits, your views on investing, your views on money mm-hmm. with each other. We did this kind of early on. We we did this in a very uh, backwards way, though. When we first became friends, we were both in relationships with other people. Mm-hmm. And how we started discussing our finances was actually that we were griping about the spending habits of our significant mm-hmm. others. Oh, yeah. It was... I was just like... Man, my significant other, every time we go out to eat, it's like they order the entire menu and I'm the one paying. And then you were like, oh, yeah, well, my significant other bought a car. And I'm Mm -hmm. like, oh. (laughs) True story. True stories, both. But like, so we kind of already had the discussion that we were on the same page, Mm -hmm. how we felt financially. So that was kind of nice. If that is not a scenario that could happen to you. Just make sure that early on in your relationship, when it gets serious, mm-hmm. don't discuss finances if you're on the fifth date, okay? Yeah. But like when it gets serious and you're maybe seriously dating, definitely when you're moving in together. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness, whether that's before or after marriage, when you live together, you have to talk these things out. You have oh, yeah. to discuss finances. Otherwise, you will make the fatal mistake a lot of relationships make, mm-hmm. fighting over money. I think it's I think it's something like thirty percent of um, marriages end in the first year because of finances. It's probably higher than that, but you know, ninety percent. I mean, statistics actually, that statistic so. sounds about right to me. Mm-hmm. Most couples fight over money. Mm-hmm. I I know in my previous marriage we fought over money a lot. I know. A lot. I know of a <laughs> lot of friends of mine who have separated from their significant others because of money issues. Mm-hmm. Not because they didn't love each other, but because they argued all the time and they weren't happy. Because they didn't know how to talk. They didn't know how to react. Mm -hmm. Not just like talk, but also react. Like, okay, we we make this joke, but like one of the deal breakers we both have, if for Christmas you ever bought me a car, Mm -hmm. I would be pissed at you. Oh, absolutely. (laughs) But I would I would be like, okay, I really, really appreciate the gift. Can we talk about how maybe to take it back? Mm -hmm. Because (laughs) But you can't like uh, you have to realize it was a nice gesture, mm-hmm. but don't get mad. Don't fight about it. Don't come in swinging. Mm-hmm. Make sure that you are coming in approachable mm-hmm. as you're boiling over because they bought you a car. Don't buy your significant other a car as a gift. Like, know, unless you can buy it outright yeah, or and it doesn't your, affect uh, their money. No, you're uh, like, if you get a bonus at work that you don't really necessarily need, you can do that. But like, Sure, but don't. But, when you buy somebody a car, mm-hmm. you're saying, hey, I got you this thing. It cost us mm-hmm. $5,000 down, and I just added a $500 a month payment to our bills. You're welcome. but, or, but I then... would scream. <laughs> <laughs> I would just, like, start crying. But I've seen couples go, and they, they, they'll buy, like, a computer or, like, a Oof. brand new cell phone, and they have to pay on that and stuff, and it's like... Sometimes their their finances are okay to cover it, yeah. but then sometimes they're struggling and it's like, we can't afford this extra $40 a month for this new upgraded phone or... But either way, mm-hmm. whether you whether you have your bank accounts separate or you both have the same account like for bills, like whether it's completely combined, completely separate or something in between, when you have to make a big purchase like that, at least discuss the purchase. Mm-hmm. You don't have to ask permission. I don't have to ask your permission to buy a new drum set. Mm-hmm. I really don't. He does need to remind me that I don't need a fifth one, but <laughs> but if I wanted to buy that guitar mm-hmm. that I showed you the other day, I don't have to ask your permission to mm-hmm. buy that. I no. make money. I can afford it. I'm going to buy it. Yeah. Maybe. But mm-hmm. we should discuss the purchase because me spending a couple hundred dollars does affect our joint finances. Mm-hmm. And it's nothing that you should be surprised with when it comes time for bills. Mm-hmm. So discuss. I think that's going to be like the general rule of every single one of these episodes is mm-hmm. that everything just discuss it. Oh yeah. And if I can if, if I can give you one piece of like big advice to leave you with today, it's Oh, there's two. Mm-hmm. Number 1, discuss and compromise or agree on your finances and how they are laid out. Mm-hmm. And number 2, don't buy a fifth drum set. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, the second one is um, 
make sure you have your eyes on your finances. Yeah. Whether they're combined or whether they're separate, make sure you are keeping your eyes on it because you don't want to leave it like an unsupervised child in a Lego store. Mm -hmm. Okay? Don't do it. Mm. <laughs> so I hope that this was helpful today. Oh, yeah. Uh, it definitely helped us out because mm -hmm. I think we came up with a solution. I think we have a plan. I know what we're doing this week. Okay, I know what you're doing this week. Oh yay! <laughs> but yeah, no, I agree. I think that I think we did come up with a good plan. I, I think it's going to work for us. I think so. And again, each one of these is going to work for each couple in their own way. So, like, or she relationship. Said, yeah, like she said, talk, discuss. Listen. Come to an agreement. Yes. Make sure that both people are in agreement. Mm -hmm. Listen to each other. Accept what the other has to say. Consider what the other person has to say. Mm -hmm. Because finances, like he said, like a lot of relationships are ended over finances. Mm -hmm. And if you just approach it in a respectful way mm -hmm. and in a logical way, mm -hmm. you should be fine. So hopefully this helps. I am absolutely loving doing this series with yeah, you. So I hope you guys are loving being a part of this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. If you guys have any um, anything to add or any questions about like you know combining your finances or not, leave a comment below. Let us know. Message us. Yeah. Um, we would try to help you out if you have any questions for us about what we do or like any ideas that you have that you may want to be like, hey, what do you think about this for us? Um, we love, we love to talk. We love to hear. So. We obviously love to talk. <laughs> <laughs> also, if you're not already subscribed, whether it's to our YouTube channel or to our podcast, make sure you hit that subscribe button mm -hmm. because we are just absolutely loving what we're doing and oh, we yeah. want to take you along on this journey. Mm -hmm. um, and don't forget, if there is a thumbs up button, make sure you smash it because like, algorithms love it when you break their thumbs up buttons. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> so help us out. Mm -hmm. Subscribe and hit the thumbs up. And leave a comment. Let us know what you think. Let us know if you disagree with us. Mm -hmm. We... At, more than we love to talk, we also love to get into arguments. I'm just <laughs> kidding. Um, but go ahead and like let us know how you feel about what we've said or maybe what works for you. Yeah, let us know um, what you do. And ask us questions. Like yeah. we said, we like to talk. Maybe you give us uh, uh, topics for future episodes. Or maybe somebody will tell us what idiots we are for choosing what we did and maybe we'll change it. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. It's always a blast and we look forward to the next one. But thanks for watching. I'm Sean. And I'm Jen. And we're out of here. Bye.